mapping a forward rate agreement. So I'm assuming that we are talking about a T1 cross T2 FRA. Again, it's a long position in this FRA. And I'm assuming that the notional amount of this FRA is NA. Therefore, what do I receive as a party with this long FRA? You will receive an amount which is NA times the difference between RM and RK. RK was pre-agreed. It was decided at time t equal to 0. RM was the market rate which was observed at time t1. So NA times RM minus RK further scaled by tau which is the time in years between t1 and t2. Okay. Again, this RK was fixed in such a way so that the value of this FRA was 0 at the time it was initiated. If I were to try and find out its value at any time between 0 and T1, then to find this value, I need to find out what is my best guess of this RM. Remember, this RM was observed only when you reach this time T1. To get the best guess of this RM, this is the equation which I'll use and that is the discount factor when I'm standing at this point in time between today, time t, and t1, let's call it df1, that times the discount factor between t1 and t2 should ideally be equal to the discount factor between today and t2, let's call it df2. Now, based on the spot rates which you observe at time t, df1 is known to you, df2 is known to you. Discount factor between t1 and t2, I can write it as 1 over 1 plus the best guess for this interest rate scaled by tau. This equation then very simply can tell me what the best guess of my rm is okay i can work out just by twisting this equation around that expected value of rm that times tau is actually df1 by df2 minus 1 so therefore to calculate the fair value of my forward i just take what is promised to me which is this amount replace this rm which is not yet known to me by its best guess an amount which comes from here and then discount this cash flow which happens at t2 to today that means i need to multiply by df2 okay this is what i have done i have taken this formula replaced the rm by expected value of rm and i have multiplied this payoff by df2 so expected value of rm that times tau i can replace it by df1 by df2 minus 1 and what do you get in the end? You get a formula which looks something like this. Very simple. The value of my FRA is notional that times DF1 minus notional times 1 plus RK tau that times DF2. Okay. Now take a look at this formula. Do the same analysis which we did for the currency forward. The only two random variables which can make my PNL go against me are DF1 and DF2. As interest rates change, DF1 and DF2 will change and I can have a negative PNL. I can make a loss. Therefore, I can treat DF1 to be a ZCB, a ZCB of maturity T1. I can treat a DF2 to be a ZCB of maturity T2 and I can treat them to be my risk factors. ZCB of maturity T1 will be a long position because it's a plus here. What is the face value required? these many dollars zcb of maturity t2 will be a short position because there's a minus sign sitting here what is the face value required na times one plus rk tau i have summarized these two positions in this table as a rule of thumb remember this that a long position in t1 cross t2 fra of notional na can be mapped onto a long position in a zcb of the near maturity which is t1 the face value required same as the notional of your fra and a short position in another zcb which is of maturity t2 i mean the more distant time t2 of face value na times 1 plus rk tau this time okay now remember this that every time i am telling you the mapping logic for a long position 
We did it for a long currency forward and this is for a long FRA. If you have to find the mapping positions for the short positions, just simply reverse the signs of these positions which we got for the long. That means for a short position in a T1 cross T2 FRA, you will need a short position in a T1 maturity ZCB and a long position in a T2 maturity ZCB. Okay.